Hello, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you around Tirana, Albania. Um, I do live here. I'm an American who's been living in Tirana for about seven months now and I don't have any plans on leaving anytime soon. If you do enjoy this video, I encourage you to look at my other videos um, looking at different cities in Albania and doing different things in Albania. Okay, so I'm going to go grab a coffee first and then I will show you around different places in Toronto. Okay, so a fun fact, Albania actually has the most cafes in the world in proportion to its population. So the coffee is definitely one of the things I enjoy most here. Um, I always start my morning with a macchiato and I pay something like 70 lek, uh, which is about 60 US cents. Okay, so now that I have this, I'm all set. Um, we'll start the tour at Skanderbeg Square. This is definitely one of the main areas in Tirana, and a lot of people pass through it on their way to work as well. So we are at Skanderbeg Square. This is considered the center of Tirana and it's named after George Castriotti Skanderbeg who was a um, commander who led a uh, resistance against the Ottoman Empire in the 1400s. So he's considered a hero here. The square is surrounded by some of the most uh, famous cultural sites in Albania. So behind me you have the National History Museum. Um, over here you've got the Opera House and the Library and then you also have the Bank of Albania as well. And I really like how spacious it is in comparison to kind of the busyness of the city. Um, if you go about five minutes into Bloku, which is the main business area, um, it's a lot more crowded and noisy. So it's a nice break from that. So that is it for Skanderbeg Square. It's definitely a must visit if you're in Toronto for a couple of days. It's one of the main spots. So now we'll go to the Toronto Castle, which is a nice area for different cafes and restaurants. Okay, so I'm just hiding under a tree waiting for the rain to stop. But on my way to the Toronto Castle, I stopped at Bunk Art, which is a museum that was constructed from an old bunker, um, and it's right next to Skanderbeg Square. Um, the story of the bunkers here, so during the communist regime in Albania, they constructed over 173,000 bunkers in between the years of 1960 and 1980. Um, and this was organized by Enver Hoxha, who was the dictator at the time. So behind me is the Tirana Castle, otherwise known as the Fortress of Justinian. And this is believed to have been a military stronghold built between the 4th and 6th century. Um, yet not much of the original structure remains. Now it's mainly just a walking area. And as you can see, there are a lot of cafes and restaurants. It's definitely a nice area to walk through and sit for a coffee. And now we'll head to the pyramid. So behind me is the pyramid, and the pyramid has a very interesting history. It was originally built in 1988 with the intention of being a museum for Enver Hoxha. Um, Enver Hoxha was the leader of the communist regime between 1944 until his death in 1985. However, in 1990, there were a lot of student protests here, which eventually led to the fall of communism. So afterwards, the pyramid began to take a different meaning. It began to be used for different events until about 2011, and since then, it's been closed off. It's not really used for anything. As you can see, there are fences behind me to block it off. So yeah, it hasn't really been used for like 10 years now, but I think they have plans to turn it into something soon.
So behind me is the entrance for Bloku, and Bloku is probably the main area here for entertainment, nightlife, cafes, restaurants, businesses. Uh, there are a lot of banks that are located here. It used to be called the Communist Block, and uh, during communism it was actually uh, an exclusive area, so it was only for officials and I think their families as well, but it was blocked off to the public. So the rain has gotten bad again, but I'll just bring you around some spots in Beloku just so you can get a sense of the cafe scene, uh, the different restaurants here as well. Okay, the rain has stopped. I just had lunch at Iona, which is a Mediterranean restaurant in Bloku. I really like them. They have uh, they have a menu that changes every single day, so it's really nice. Um, and now I am headed to the park. So I've just entered the Grand Park of Tirana. Uh, the park has a lot of different trails, but if you do the main path, it's around six kilometers all the way around. And it's very peaceful here. I often come here to read or do work just under a tree. Um, and often a lot of families will come here, ride their bikes, hang out around the artificial lake. So it's definitely a very popular spot. Um, and the nature here is very beautiful as well. The park also has a lot of like memorials and important monuments within it, but you can also find churches, restaurants, cafes, um, a lot of outdoor activities as well, like basketball courts, tennis courts, uh, soccer fields. So right behind me, you have the artificial lake. There's a trail that goes around the lake. Um, it's really nice to walk around on a beautiful day. Um, and yeah, I mean on a crowd on a sunny day usually there are a lot of people just setting up like little picnics around here But because it literally just stopped raining. It's actually quite empty right now now We're going to leave the park. We'll go to Mother Teresa Square. This was designed by Italian architects in the 1930s um, It's very spacious as well. Mother Teresa Square is surrounded by the University of Toronto and I believe there are a couple other universities as well that surround the area. What's really cool is Mother Teresa Square actually perfectly lines up with the Skanderbeg Square statue. If you just follow this road straight for 10 to 15 minute walk, you'll end up back at Skanderbeg Square. And you can actually see the statue in the distance from far away. I'm headed to my last stop. I'm going to go to Bazaar de Iri. Uh, this is called the New Bazaar and it's one of the oldest neighborhoods in Tirana. Um, it, it was renovated in 2017, I think slightly after the Skanderbeg Square was renovated. Um, and now it's uh, a bit more modern, it's very colorful. So behind me is the new bazaar. Again, this is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Tirana and it's recently been renovated, um, but the market here sells a lot of fresh vegetables, fruit. Um, they also sell Rocky, which is like a traditional drink here. Um, and they have a lot of souvenirs as well. And there are also a lot of cafes and restaurants that surround it, so it's a good spot for dining as well. All right, so I'll wrap up the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, again, these are just some places that I enjoy visiting in Tirana. If you'd like to know anything else about my experience living in Tirana, um, you can put suggestions in the comments below. I'm happy to make other videos about my experience here as well. Um, other than that, I will most likely be having some videos out soon of traveling to different cities in Albania, so keep an eye out for those. Okay, so thank you for watching.